couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there Lick and Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lick and Riff and in this video I'll show you how you yourself can create and even improvise an old school detective style blues uh, with a descending bass line. The descending bass line would be E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, and back to E. Okay, so seven, six, five, four, three, two on the fifth string and then either back to seven or the sixth string open okay e e flat d d flat c b and e okay you can add chords to that as well but we'll leave that to the end of the lesson okay just uh because it's supposed to be a bass and melody thing and for the solo on top of that i'll show you how to tie it together in a moment it's easier than you think um, for the solo, you can use either the E minor scale or the E minor pentatonic scale, would be, which would be easier. Okay, you can combine the two. Um, the E minor scale would be 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12 on the E string. The E minor pentatonic scale would be just 0, 3, 5, 7, 10, 12. Okay, you must be asking yourself right now, how, I'm gonna, how am I going to play with 10 and 12 if I'm you know, with the descending bass line. The answer is simple. You can do the same bass line on the sixth string with 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and 0. So you can do that if you like. But we'll start with the previous one, and then we'll see what we can do with the high notes. So the method would be to play the notes you have at your disposal on the E string at the same area in which the bass notes are located. So if you're on 7, you can do uh, 0, 5, 7, and 8. Okay, something like this. Okay? And then play the bass note. Then you can continue the descending bass line. Okay? And just, you know, build a very, very simple lick and put the bass notes on the beats. Now, um, you can complicate it, but I don't recommend it. It's supposed to be a very atmospheric thing. Something like this. Okay, something like this. I just played 5, 7, and 8, okay, and the open E string with the descending bass line. Okay, I played 7 to 4. So try it and you'll see that it's not as daunting as you may think at first because it's a slow improvisation. And you can use the second string as well if you like. Um, it's the same thing, only with um, 8 instead of 7 for the pentatonic scale. So it's 0, 3, 5, 8, 10, 12. Okay, so if you want to play the bass line on 12, you can do... Okay, something like this. Okay, so... Okay, and just play 12, 11, 10. And I was just playing strings 1 and 2 on 12 and 10, randomly. And then you can go back to C and uh, B here. Okay? I was playing 3 on the 2nd string and the open E string, just rhythmically. Okay? And you can slide 3 to 5 and play the open E string with it at the end. Um, so again, keep it simple. No reason to complicate it. It's just, it's supposed to be a fun exercise. See, even if you get confused with the bass notes, you can A, correct yourself, or B, just play around with the bass notes themselves. Okay, if you play uh, 7, 6, 5, 3 by mistake, then you can play 4, 2, 0, or just play 3, 2, 0 without, you know, skipping. You can skip the, the, the fourth fret. That's what I'm trying to say. So even if you make a mistake in the bass line, it's not a mistake because it's your improvisation. It's your creation. So it's not really a mistake. You can do... Instead of 4-3-2, you can do 3-3-2. Um, and 
And of course you can use the rest of the pentatonic scale if you like as a finish. Um... Okay, try to start at different places. I started at 10. Try to start, you know, just randomly and see what you get. Because each collection of notes with that descending uh, bass line would give you a different result. Um... Yeah, you can uh, use uh, 3 and 2 and 0 on the third string, you know, as the blue note line. Yeah, and then 2 on the fourth. Yeah, just as a finishing, um, a finishing lick. So, yeah, you can use six on the E string as an embellishment from five to six. Okay, or five hammer on to six, pull off to to five when you're with the bass note. Okay, um, okay, just find your own fingerings. Even if the fingering isn't very convenient, yeah, it's just for a moment because you can always open the string. Okay? And you can also variate on this, of course. You can create your own variations. You can prolong the bass line. You can shorten it. And of course, don't forget, you have it on the sixth string. Um, So you can use, um, yeah, you can always bar if you have the same friend. Yeah, you can utilize your mistakes because um, mistakes would kind of create tension here because this wasn't really a mistake because with B, it created a, an augmented sound. Okay, I didn't do it on purpose, but it did create an augmented sound. So even if you play the wrong note, it might fall at the exact right timing with the descending bass line, okay, and create a diminished sound or an augmented sound. So if you make a mistake, just keep playing and it might solve itself. So um, what about chords? You can add, okay, you can do this. Okay, um, E minor on strings uh, 3, 4, and 5, you can do 4, 5, 7, okay? And then for the okay, E flat bass, you can either play okay, this, which is B over E flat, it's uh, 4, 4, 6 on strings 3, 4, and 5, okay? And then it's, you can play a D chord, okay? You can play 2, 4, 5 on strings 3, 4, and 5, and then do this again, just here instead of... Here you can play two frets down, play it on uh, two, two, four on strings three, four, and five again. Then you can play the C chord head, okay, zero, uh, zero, two, three on strings three, four, five, okay, zero, two, three. Then you can take this down one fret and create a B augmented chord, okay, which I just showed you uh, with the. Uh, okay, so it's you can also play the second string with it. Okay, you can uh, arpeggio it if you like. So you get this chord progression. Okay, back to E minor. Or you can add a diminished chord, only if you like to. Um, okay, or even... Yeah, you can play the C7 there. So it would be the same E minor chord. Then the E flat diminished would be, again, everything on strings 2, 3, and 4. It would be 5, 7, and 6. And then you can do the D chord again. And then another diminished chord. Granted, this doesn't sound as good as the previous one, so you can do this one I showed you before, but you can do uh, a variation. You can play okay? if you want, if it sounds good to you. Again, the same diminished chord, just down two frets. And then C7, okay? uh, which would be 3-2-3 three, three on strings 3, 4, and 5. And then the B diminished or B 
C7, B7, and then E minor. You can, all, you can also, of course, play E minor. But the real trick would be to play the solo with this. So I'll show you an example if I can. Okay, you can play just strings uh, five and four, okay? So for the E minor, it would be five and seven on strings five and four. Then it goes one fret down. Okay, and then it would be um, it would be four and five for D. And then it would be two and four. Okay? And then the C chord head. Okay, and then you just take this down. So that would be a real challenge to try and improvise with Five and seven, four and six, four and five, and then two and four, two and three, one and two. Okay, this is for more advanced improvisers. Uh, I'll try to give you an example. Okay, you can use your pinky. Okay, then, okay, you have this, so you can still use your pinky. You can use six for chromatics. Okay. Okay. You have to be really aware of where you are and what options you have at your disposal. But let's go back to the simpler type of playing. I'll give you one last example, which would probably sound like the rest of them because it's a very confined type of improvisation, which is exactly the point. random moves around the, the pentatonic scale and as long as the bass keeps moving you're gonna end up fine you're gonna end up with with something really interesting probably more interesting than this even so um subscribe to my channel if you haven't already there's a ton of lessons here and everything is for free of course so why not subscribe and join the lake and North community however if you like to give something back then uh there's a patreon page the link is below in the description and i thank you uh, I thank you in advance for your generosity. Anything you'd like to give back is fine. It all goes right back into your guitar education, into these lessons. So I'll see you the next one, and uh, you go improvise. Bye for now. Enjoy. Thanks for watching.